In this video, I'm taking a deep dive into the nuances of robotic port placement for both the SI and XI systems for a low interior resection with total mesorectal excision. I'm also going to do my best to cover some tips and tricks and common pitfalls for this extremely important part of the operation. Now, this video, as you may know, is the third in a much larger series that will help you approach mastery of the low interior section with TME. And if you haven't watched either of the first two videos, whether it's the 21 steps of a low interior section or the video specific to patient positioning and room setup, go back to the playlist and take a look at it. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to the channel to get notifications as I'm adding content to this and to other series regularly. Now, the meat of this video will be broken down into two main sections. One for each of the robotic systems, XI followed by SI. Now, I will premise this discussion by saying there is no single right way to place ports. There's multiple considerations to take into account, such as body habitus, surgeon preference, your skill level, where you are in your learning curve. And I'm gonna do my best to cover some of the best practices that I've developed over the years to get you through this case in a frustration-free manner. Okay, so starting with XI port placement, I'm going to show a blank canvas and we're going to go through a, several different scenarios and some talking points on exactly how to get through these cases and the strategy for port placement. Once the patient's prepped, just before I make an incision, I'll fear for the subcostal margins and then the ASIS. And I use this for landmarks to figure out how much docking real estate that I have to kind of go by. And then the first thing that I typically do is enter the patient's abdomen using an optical entry technique through the right upper quadrant. Now, if I plan on placing an ileostomy, if the patient's marked for one, that might be through the ileostomy site. It may just be a super high right upper quadrant incision. It all just kind of depends on the patient's body habitus. But let's keep it for the purposes of this discussion. I'll place that port in the right upper quadrant. I establish pneumoperitoneum. I then place the patient in about 30 degrees of Trunellenburg with an 8 degree tilt to the right. And that's when I start taking a look at what the, the trajectory of the port seems to be. So what I'll now do is mentally draw a line from the ASIS to the left subcostal margin, something like this. And then what I'll do is place my staple port about halfway the distance between the ASIS and the umbilicus, roughly speaking right here. And then I'll measure around eight to nine centimeters to the left of that, which is roughly the width of my palm. And that's where my camera port's going to go. Eight to nine centimeters medial to that will be the next port. And the eight to nine centimeters medial to that is going to be the next one. So the trajectory of the ports will look something like this. Port one, port two, port three, port four, slash stapler. Number three here is my camera. This is typically what my configuration looks like. And in fact, this is my universal port configuration for nearly every single robotic case that I do, whether it's an LAR, an APR, a right colectomy, a transverse colectomy, a subtotal colectomy. And there's a lot of talking points to this, and we won't get into that uh, in this video, but suffice it to say that with this port configuration, you can truly get really anything taken out of the abdomen. The other thing that I'll do in these cases, assuming I'm doing a legit LAR when I'm taking the entire mesorectum and I'm doing an ultra low uh, dissection where there's going to be tons of plumes of smoke and I need all the cephalad retraction from my assist as I can get, I will also place a second assist port um, in the patient's sub xiphoid region, typically around right here. This will vary, of course, depending on the vectors that I have open and depending on the patient's body habitus, depending on scars, and especially depending on where the ileostomy marking site is. So let's say the ileostomy marking site was right here. Well, that would mean that I would just place my assist port there. I will move this second assist port around in a number of ways. So that's one very standard port configuration that I'll do. The second port configuration that I tend to do, stepping off of the ASIS a two to three centimeters, measuring just to the left of the falciform, and then what I'll do is I'll essentially draw a straight line between those two points, and on that yellow line that I just drew, that's where I start placing the robotic ports. So here in, this, in the right lower quadrant will be the staple port, eight to nine centimeters above that will be my camera port, eight to nine centimeters above that, the number two arm, and then the number three arm. Again, assist ports being in the right upper quadrant like that. The benefit of this port placement is that you can really access the entire left abdomen with this port configuration 
without too much of a challenge. So this is a very elegant, very reproducible port configuration. In fact, this is what I teach in all the courses, is that you want to stand your ports up, get them as close to the right upper quadrant and as far away from the pathology as possible. And on the XI, typically instrument length is not an issue, and you can truly access the deep pelvis with this port configuration without too much of a challenge. Now, there will be instances in which the patient's body habitus needs to accept modifications to the port configuration. So instead of the subcostal margins being marked in blue like I have them here, sometimes they actually may be much lower in the ASIS as such. And you can see there's not really much distance between the ASIS and the subcostal margins here. So in this instance, what you'll want to do again is you can do it how I do it, place the ports in a linear configuration spanning from the right lower to the left upper quadrant, but you sometimes you don't have enough room. And so you can't get your first and second arm because the subcostal margin is blocking you. And so in this instance, you have actually two options. One, stand the ports up like I showed in the second example, or flatten everything out, almost like an SI port configuration. Both of these configurations work quite well. The latter, meaning the, the more flat configuration of the ports, looking something like this, works just fine if truly you're doing only a pelvic dissection and maybe a little bit of left lower quadrant, left pelvic sidewall dissection. But this is a little bit more challenging when you're trying to get the flexure down. But you can do it. It involves rotating the flex joints to dunk underneath yourself to take the flexure down. But this is not the most ideal configuration if you are planning to do some upper abdominal work. And so I would advocate and the patient with a very short abdominal real estate to stand your ports up a little bit higher like I showed in the second example. And again, I cannot overstress the utility of having two assistant ports in place to assist in cephalad retraction of the rectum and in constant suctioning of the plumes of smoke and fluid that always accumulate in the deep pelvis, especially during the posterior dissection. Okay, so that's XI port configuration for low anterior section with a few different modifications. Now let's switch gears into SI port configuration for the low anterior section. Same thing I always do, mark out the subcostal margins and the ASIS. First thing I do always is get in through a right upper quadrant optical entry technique. Take a look at the lay of the land. Now it's a little bit more challenging on the SI, you have to be very methodical with the port configuration. And so I do take my time, measure things out, and very obsessive about the way in which the ports go in. So once the patient's adamant is insufflated, I'll take a look laparoscopically to the right lower quadrant and essentially measure the distance again between the ASIS and the umbilicus, take about 50% of that, and that's where my staple port will go. My camera port will go around 8 to 9 centimeters to the left of that, just above and to the right of the umbilicus. And then what I do is I draw a straight line as far lateral as I can get, almost to the left pericolic gutter, just anterior to the white line of tolt. And that's where my number three arm will go. And then I take a look at that line, that plane that I've just formed between the camera port and the number three arm. And I measure two finger breaths above that line about 50% of the way. And that's where my number one arm will go. So this is roughly what my SI port placement for a low anterior section will look like. And again, very liberally placing a second port for my assistant to have cephalad retraction and suctioning in the deep hemipelvis. One of the challenges with this port configuration and with the SI robot in general is splenic flexure mobilization. I will be honest with you and tell you that the first 100 or so cases that I did were on SI. And anytime I had to take a flexure down, I'm going to be honest, I just did it laparoscopically. To me, it wasn't worth the struggle trying to take it down robotically. That being said, I didn't have this operation yet mastered robotically. I was still very early in my learning curve. The technical nuances of this operation done robotically was very foreign to me. And since then, I have come across some best practices that I do want to share with you right now. If you do want to take the flexure down robotically using the SI robotic system, it is absolutely possible. And really all you have to do is, instead of placing the second port here as a standard laparoscopic port, change that also to an 8 millimeter robot port. And let's call this port 3B. And let's call this port down here and the left flank, let's call it 3A. So when you get to that part of the operation in which you're taking the flexure down, you will actually exclude, and I'm going to in green knock these two out here, you're going to exclude these two arms, take arm 3A, rotate it behind the robot, dock it to 3B, and you're going to end up operating in this direction here, camera here, and two in this direction there. 
this actually works quite well. Of course, there are going to be some struggles, there are going to be some collisions, but this is the benefit of having an assist to help you out with this part of the operation and also knowing your limitations and spacing the ports out to get the splenic flexure mobilized in a reproducible and predictable manner. So that about sums up port placement for both the SI and XI robotic systems for low anterior section with TME. As a reminder, this is the third video in a much larger teaching series on low anterior section with TME. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel so you know when I post further videos in this series and many other series as well. Stay tuned, stay engaged, and definitely let me know in the comment section what other videos you'd like to have posted. Thanks a lot and have a great day.